introduce Sister Rakia. So let's all bow our heads for a short word of prayer. Well, thank you, everyone, and may God bless all of us as we pray at this time. Our gracious Father, we are grateful and thankful for giving us another Sabbath day. We thank you for all your blessings to us this morning, and even from Sabbath as it begun. Father, at this time, we want to commit the next program into your keeping. We especially want to bless you, Father, because we want to have a word from Sister Rukia that is going to bless our hearts, all of our hearts. And we thank you for all the hosts and everyone who's making preparation for this message. May it bless us and may, may we look forward, not only for time, but that for all eternity, we will be together in praising and glorifying your name. For Christ's sake, amen. 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 And for those of you who don't know, that is Sister Rakia's child's dad. Now, some of you might remember Rakia as a young girl coming to church, coming to camp at True for the Final Generation. And now she has grown into a beautiful young lady and she has chosen to look at the feel of health of natural therapy, natural remedies. Now, Sister Rakia is currently serving at Uchi Pines Institute as a lifestyle counselor and director. And she also helps to train other persons who go to that, who attend that institute. But the whole aim is to provide information and education to allow you to live a better and healthier life to prevent disease. And today's topic should be looking at hydrotherapy. And this is actually a class. So you're going to be learning something as she teach that you can use for your own benefit and for the benefit of others. Okay, and Ellen I had a lot to say about hydrotherapy and about natural therapies. So without any further ado, I'm going to invite Sister Rakia to speak to you. And I'm going to ask everyone to hold all questions, make a note of your questions so that you can ask any questions at the end of the presentation. So we're not allowing any interruptions, okay? Thank you. Over to you, Sister Rakia. All right, hello everyone. Can you hear me? You're sounding a little in the background. So if you can raise your mic a bit, that would be nice. Okay. All right, any better now? Yes, it's, it's a lot better, so proceed. All right, well, thank you for having me. So happy to be here with you. Happy Sabbath again. Um, as was said before, we'll be talking a little bit about hydrotherapy today. We only have a short time, so we're going to cover as much as we can within the hour. But I'm really excited to share with you um, really one of my favorite things to do because I really believe that hydrotherapy is not just simple, but it's one of the most powerful treatment modalities we can use to prevent disease and treat sickness. So we prayed already, so I'm just going to jump right in, and I want to begin with sharing with you some uh, quotations from two very well-known books, Medical Ministry and the Ministry of Healing. And it says here, this first quotation says, water treatments wisely and skillfully given may be the means of saving many lives. Let diligent study be united with careful treatments. So water treatments, how wisely and skillfully given can know, okay, maybe you. save many lives. Let diligent, study, let diligent study be united with careful treatment. Down at the bottom, we have another um, quotation from the Ministry of Healing. Here it says, water treatments are not appreciated as they should be. And to apply them skillfully requires work that many are unwilling to perform. So even though it is simple, it does require some work. And you will see that as we go on. But none should feel excused for ignorance or indifference on this subject. 
there are many ways in which water can be applied to relieve pain and check disease. All should become intelligent in its use in simple home treatment. And that's what we'll be focusing on today. We can use hydrotherapy to treat um, simple things like a sprained ankle or a flu or a cold, but we can also use them to treat some of our bigger diseases like cancer, autoimmune disease. But today we wanna focus in how, on how we can use these things in our home. So today, hopefully you can go and do some of these things. So what is hydrotherapy? Simply put, hydrotherapy is the use of water to treat disease or maintain health through thermal therapy. So we're using water in its different forms, solid, vapor, gas, but we're also using it at different temperatures, right? Hot and cold. And we'll talk a little bit uh, more about that. So how does this really work? What's the physiology behind hydrotherapy? Well, hydrotherapy targets the circulatory system. What we wanna do is optimize the function of the organ cell um, through the delivery system. So we can eat lots of food, great foods and vegetables. We can have a lot of supplements and so on. But if that good oxygen and nutrients cannot get to the area of disease, and if uh, byproducts and toxins or um, waste products cannot be removed, we'll never receive the benefit, all right? So here we have hot and cold treatments cause dramatic changes in blood vessels, chiefly vasodilation and vasoconstriction. Two big words that just mean, just means in one, when we apply the heat, the blood vessels open up or dilate. And then when we apply cold, we have the opposite effect. Well, short-term cold, we have vasoconstriction. So we're creating somewhat of a pump, right? A pumping system. Because blood vessels in local areas are still part of the circulatory system as a whole, Change it, changes in blood vessels in one area of the body can affect the entire circulatory system, all right? And you can see this simply when you wash your hands or you put your, yeah, your hands into hot water under the tap, immediately what happens? Your hands turn red, right? So your body responds to the heat by opening up the blood vessels and bringing um, the blood to that area. When we apply cold, the opposite effect um, happens. Anytime one or more of these blood vessels become larger through vasodilation or smaller through vasoconstriction, fluid must be redistributed within the system. And so we have this circulation of all the good things that we need, the nutrients, Really, we want um, the good stuff from the immune system, simply speaking, right? The white blood cells and so on to come into the area of disease and take away, um, you know, the bad, the bad stuff. All right. So this is a little bit of how it works, the physiology. Hydrotherapy has been used for uh, many, many years. Uh, we have here Hippocrates in 460 B.C., right, used hot and cold baths, um, not just as a cleansing for its cleansing tonic effect, but also for medicinal purposes. Thermal baths were recommended to cure headaches, promote good respiration, relax the joints, help with pneumonia, uh, pain in the chest and back. Neutral baths are prescribed for insomnia. We use that today, neutral baths for um, insomnia. And then in the 17 and 1800s, this uh, famous farmer, I can't quite pronounce his name, Vincent Pritznitz, uh, used hydrotherapy on his farm to help with his family, uh, his animals, his farm animals. Um, here it says he noticed that animals, sprains and bruises, as well as tumors on horses' hoofs healed faster when they were bathed in cold water. He treated his own fractures and bruises from a major accident by using cold water and quickly regained his health, contrary to doctors' 
prediction. Vincent became uh, wildly successful in 1840. He treated over 1,600 patients all over the world using mainly or primarily hot and cold treatments along with a good healthy diet. And then more recently, about a little over 100 years ago, we have uh, Dr. John Harvey Kellogg at Battle Creek Sanitarium. John Harvey Kellogg was the medical director of the Battle Creek Battle Creek Sanitarium. Um, Battle Creek was right, world renowned, a world renowned health institute um, where hundreds of uh, clients, patients would come to be treated with a host of different diseases. Um, water treatments were also used here in Battle Creek Sanitarium along with good exercise, nutrition, all the eight laws of health, and then some other um, herbal and natural remedies. All right, so in this class, briefly, uh, we're going to go over or demonstrate how to apply some of these treatments. We're going to be using water in its three forms, liquid, solid, or the ice, and gas, or vapor. Hopefully, you have already had a hydrotherapy treatment for the day. You went, hopefully, sometime today, took a shower, well, that is as simple as it gets. Hydro water therapy. Here's a list of some of the treatments that um, can be used. Again, hydrotherapy is a term that covers maybe even hundreds of different water, ther water therapies used in its different forms. And so we'll focus in on some of the most important ones, the ones that you can do again at home. I'll begin with the simplest one. It's called the hot foot bath. Now the hot foot bath is exactly what it says. It is putting your feet into hot water. Um, we can provide more information uh, if needed on some of these specific treatments, but again, just keeping it simple, the hot foot bath can be used for colds and flus. It can be used for headaches. Um, because of that deriv derivative effect, all right? So when I put my feet into hot water, we're pulling, we just learned that the blood vessels in that area open up, so it causes vasodilation. And now we're pu pulling the blood from one area to a wave, right? And so when we have pain in the head, the blood is congested in the head. And so we're pulling by putting my feet into hot water, we're pulling that congested blood away from the head uh, helping to reduce pain in that area. It works the same way for menstrual cramps, right? Um, here we have chest congestion, abdominal cramps, pelvic congestion, etc. We do want to be careful if there's any condition where um, your, your patient is unable to feel the temperature of the water. So any condition in which the circulation of the feet is poor, and here we have um, diabetes and other vascular types of diseases. So um, that's one thing to be careful, right? Of we can potentially burn them if they're not aware of the temperature of the water. So I'm gonna jump right into demonstrating this for you. And we're going to move some of this across and we'll have a, thank you. I have a, yes, I mm -hmm. we'll have someone come in and sit down here for us. We're doing good, you can hear me, so distant. Hello, anybody there? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, so we have one. Okay, okay. All right, so the hot foot bath, again, as we said, simply put, it's just putting your feet into hot water. We want to, let's say my dear sister here has a little cough or a flu. She feels like she's getting something um, coming down and we want to boost the immune system, maybe create even a little bit of a fever to stimulate the immune system to come out and um, clean up the system. Um, this is the treatment that we can use. So 
we have a lot of linen here. Really, you don't need what you really, really need a basin to put the hot water in. I have some ice because we're taking blood away from the head. And so we do want to keep, you know, the head cool. We don't want her to faint or anything like that, even though this treatment is not that intense at all. Here on the chair, we have a sheet and a blanket. Uh, use whatever you have at home, three sheets, two blankets, right? The point is just to get the client warm as possible. No air um, coming in. And then we have a couple towels. So um, a, a neck towel here to a hand towel that we're going to use to put around the neck and then um, a towel for the head. All right. So first, I'm just going to ask you to dip your uh, feet into that water. How does it feel? Great. It feels great. All right. Not too hot, not too cold. Again, just to the um, client's tolerance because we're doing this at home and um, we want to be safe. All right, then we're going to, of course, you can see she knows what to do, but I'm going to do it. We're going to wrap this all around her body. We say snug as a bug in a rug. <laughs> all right. So all and you can rec you recognize that the sheet goes right on over, right? The tub down at the bottom. Okay, so we have too much neck exposed. So we're going to do some more layering here. Then we go in with our blanket. And this one is pretty small, but it could have been bigger. All right, again, all the way up and over. All right, to make sure that uh, the air, the chilled air isn't going to go in here or the heat escapes, we're going to put a little towel around the neck all right and this could you know we could have put it first it just does depends right okay so this looks super simple but honestly do you feel hot even right there no you're gonna okay <laughs> right as soon as you begin doing this treatment um it, you immediately begin to warm up all right and that's what you want you want the removal of waves right through sweating and so on but also we want the blood to circulate. And so she would become uh, hot, her, her pulse is gonna go up just a little bit. She's gonna begin sweating on the head, which will you know, use our cold water in this basin here, our cold water to dab the head and also keep the um, head cool. We're gonna offer her water to drink because she will be losing fluid, right? She'll be sweating. So we're going to offer her water anytime she likes. And I forgot the most important thing, which is always prayer, right? We know that none of these things can work without the blessing of the Lord. So we begin by prayer and move into our treatment. Simple, simple treatment. This treatment goes for about 20 to 25 minutes. You can go longer if you like, 30 minutes. Just remember to keep the head cool. During this time, of course, you'll have to do some things. You'll have to, this hot water is not going to stay hot. And so you'll have to add if you're using it from the sink or from your, um, you know, tap and so on. We want to add some hot um, water. Let me just grab my basin here. We want to be careful not to burn them. Yeah. So bring up my sheet and you can ask her to put her feet to one side maybe the next side since I'm on this side there we go and add your hot water right simple simple just maintaining the heat of the water through um, the treatment all right at the end almost all if not all of our hydrotherapy treatments we end with cold so at the end we're going to remove all of these layers blanket so we can get it off maybe it's this side there we go all right so 30 minutes has passed and we're all done with our treatment we could do two things send her to her shower to get to do now a cool 
room temperature to cool shower, or we can do what we call the cold mitten friction, where we um, actually do friction to the joints toward the heart, all right? We would actually begin on the feet. So we're just gonna have her stretch out those legs and pour this cold water. And at this time they're like screaming and kicking because it does feel pretty cold after you know sitting here for a while. We'll dry that off. We'll also do cold mitten friction to the legs, to the uh, arms, chest, back, all right? A big part of hydrotherapy is the resting period. So generally after all of these treatments that we'll demonstrate today, we'd like you to go to your bed or go into, yeah, go, go to the bed and rest for about 30 to 40 minutes, all right? So that was the hot foot bath. At the end, we'll have questions. So I'm just gonna move on to our next treatment. All right, let's get situated here. Our next treatment, while uh, maybe I'll have my girl get and we'll talk a little bit here. All right, our next treatment is called the fomentation treatment. It is, um, or revulsive is another word for uh, that treatment. I'll show you what a fomentation is. Let me move some of these out of the way. Right. <laughs> All right. Fermentation treatment. The fermentation treatment can be used for uh, mainly for your chest uh, conditions, upper and lower respiratory tract conditions. So we have here chest congestion, asthma, asthma pneumonia. Um, coughs. Okay, let's go behind. All right. Let me show you what a fomentation, this fancy word that you may not have heard before. Let me show you. All right. Let me show you what that looks like. So here at um, the Lifestyle Center, Uchi Pines Lifestyle Center, we use this pad that, oh, maybe right here. There we go. Pad that is wool. So several layers of wool cloth and we just sew it together. And then we have also a wool blanket that we cover it in so that um, that holds in the heat. But at home, you don't have this and you really don't need it. All you need is a towel and a plastic bag. And so today we'll be using this method because this is what you have at home. All right. Is that one A wet towel. Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do to create our fomentation pad we're gonna take just a regular bath towel, fold it. I have it folded in four here, just because that's a nice, simple size to apply. I'm going to, we can do warm it up in different uh, ways. The way that is generally used, we'll put it into hot water, so, or any water, I right? just dampen the, the towel under the sink, and then I'll pop it into this um, bag, a plastic bag, and then roll this entire thing up and put it into the microwave. Now you may think that this will actually burn, but it doesn't. So we put it into the microwave for about three to five minutes. And when you take this out, it will be really hot. So hot that you can't even quite touch it, okay? So let's move on to how to actually do the treatment. Now that we know what a fermentation pad is, this hot um, application here, we're gonna uh, do it now in the treatment. All right. Oh. There we go. All right, so I'll have my lady come on in and we'll just have her lay down and go on in. All right. Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. Comfortable ish. <laughs> okay. And we'll get
10 for me, 10. There we go. Can you see, is that a good spot? All right, so the fermentation treatment, we're going to combine we're gonna combine what we just learned in the hot foot bath to give more of a systemic um, effect. We're going to combine the hot foot bath with the hot pads on the chest, all right? So here I just have her feet stuck in the hot water while then a little bit more for me, sorry. There we go, all right? All the way up and over. Now we're gonna apply the hot application to the chest. This is how we've prepared it in a dry towel. So we have a dry towel and we put our hot pad in there that we just took out of the microwave. And we're gonna put this right onto the bare chest. Well, not today, but <laughs> right in treatment, we'll be putting this right on to the skin. Um, between the fermentation and the skin, we have about two layers right because we we put put the towel we fold the towel in two and we're gonna leave this on for three minutes okay if i really wanted to intensify this treatment i could even begin by putting a fermentation on the back so before she even was on the table i'll put one on the back then one on the top, right? Especially for treating the lungs, we really wanna make sure that all around we're getting the application of heat and then we have the hot foot bath. So to create this pump effect that we talked about before, vasodilation, vasoconstriction, we'll apply our hot or fermentation, our heating pad for three minutes and then we'll follow that with cold for 30 seconds. So let's say our Three minutes is up. We're going to take this off. I have my bucket here. Maybe you can see it. Yeah, there we go. We have our bucket here with ice cold water. I'm going to squeeze that towel out. And now this is cold, right? Apply the cold right onto the skin for 30 seconds. And usually we do just like on the arms we did before, some friction, we're gonna do some friction over that area. Now this is, I'm demoing it here on the chest for chest um, coughs and uh, pain, pneumonia, asthma and so on. But this can be done on the joints for joint pain, right? So not just on the chest, this is just the easiest way to demonstrate 30 seconds is up, we're going to move over into the hot again. So we're gonna, for first actually let's dry because we don't want our towel to become wet, the towel that we have the fermentation in. So this is a dry towel. I'll put this one back into the cold because that's for cold. Dry that area off, perfect. Now we're going to apply <laughs> our hot for three minutes, all right? This can be done for five to seven exchanges. There we go. Okay, during this time, uh, we'll do the same thing like we did in the first treatment. We wanna begin with prayer, make sure that she's comfortable. So she may begin because this is a lot more intense. Now we not only have heat uh, by the feet, we also have um, a heating pad on the chest and maybe one on the back. So we're gonna make sure that we're cooling down her head here, right? Offering water to drink as much as she needs and then um, monitoring or maintaining the heat in the basin, all right? So we're gonna be uh, adding hot water as needed down here. Go ahead. All right. So we've done this for five exchanges, hot and cold, 
hot and cold. Three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold. Now we'll end. So we end always with cold. So here's my cold rag. I'm going to put this right on over. Do my, do my friction. 30 seconds. I'm gonna dry, oh, was that the dry cloth? You get the concept. <laughs> now we'll make this the dry cloth. Dry this off. All right. We wanna continue on with that cold to anywhere that we apply, any area that we apply um, hot, especially down here at the feet, we wanna send some of the blood back to the head. Um, normalize the system. So. We're gonna, just as we did on the hot foot bath, raise for me, and we're going to, there we go. We're going to take this ice water, pour it on over the feet. Doesn't have to be 30 seconds necessarily, but just as long as we make sure if we're getting that cold water. And then from here, especially if we had another fermentation on the bath, We'd ask her to sit up if we can help you. There we go. And then we'll also apply cold here to the back. All right. This is probably one of the number one treatments that we are now demonstrating because of um, COVID and all the symptoms associated with it. This can be a very, very helpful treatment. All right. The fomentation treatment. Excellent. We're gonna move on to our next treatment, which is one of the harder ones, but hopefully you can keep up with this. Give us a moment just to get um, situated here. Can you help her bring this? Okay. Oh, we'll just put it here in front. <laughs> okay. The hot half bath or the fever bath is what um, it, where it's called here. It creates a fake fever in the body. All right. Now, a fever is a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, I can't hear you. But it's a good thing <laughs> because... Um, but through that fever, the white blood cells are activated, the immune system is activated, and um, there we go. Yeah, okay. Uh, the immune system is activated, and the body can respond, or the body goes into uh, almost crisis mode. It says, oh, wait, something's happening, right? I need to clear up. I need to mobilize the white blood cells to um, clear up whatever is going on and so this is the <laughs> this treatment is like the machine gun of hydrotherapy treatments um, the fever bath is used for mainly cancer treatments and some of those you know larger um, th those diseases that are harder to treat all right so for this treatment here's what we need we have this makeshift uh, tub that you'll have to imagine with us here. And um, we're going to demonstrate how this happens. All right, let's just jump right in and then we'll have you um, go. Okay, so because we're creating a fever, we want to maintain or we want to monitor her oral, oral temperature, right? That's the only way we would really know if she is actually and having a fever. So before she even jumps into a funny looking tub here, if you could see that, <laughs> we would have taken her oral temperature. I have a thermometer here. So we would have taken her oral, uh, oral temperature and we would also recorded her pulse because we don't want the pulse rate or the heart rate to go too high. As I said, this is probably one of the most um, 
intricate hydrotherapy treatments that we'll be doing today. It's one of the hardest because it's used for the bigger diseases, okay? So you have to keep up with me. So we'll, we'll start by uh, taking her oral temperature, which we've done already. We're also gonna uh, record her pulse or her heart rate because we don't want it to exceed about 140. And then the third thing that we wanna take is the or record is the temperature of the tub or the water here i have my nice water uh thermometer i'm going to give it to you to hold and generally if this is the first time that we're giving this treatment we want it to we want to begin around 101 to 104 degrees fahrenheit okay so that's pretty comfortable bath water most people can step into that um you know that temperature some People tolerate water, some clients tolerate cold, hot water more, like I tolerate hot water really well, she doesn't so much, so, right? So it really just depends on the tolerance of the person. But we wanna start at 103, 104, and we're gonna monitor those three things every five to 10 minutes, all right? So we put her into the bath, and we took all of that already. Um, in your bathtub at home, uh, probably half of the body would be out, right? Hence the reason it's called the hot half bath. But we really want the entire body to be affected, right? We want the whole body to warm up as much as possible, as well as if more of the body is in the water, the quicker her oral temperature will increase, right? The faster the treatment goes on. So we're gonna use a towel and you can imagine that the, this entire thing would be in the water. And during the treatment, we'll be using a uh, pitcher, anything you have, dipping the hot water out of the tub and just making sure that this towel is nice and wet with all the hot water that it, uh, you know, from in the tub. Okay, so the goal of this treatment at home, the goal of this treatment is to get to about the oral temperature to get to about 102 degrees, 102 degrees, and to maintain that for about 20 minutes, all right? So we're gonna check her oral temperature every 10 minutes until it gets to one or two, and then count 20 minutes from there on. Usually takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get to one or two, especially if the water temperature is gonna stay at 104. Um, you wanna try to increase it again to the client's tolerance, maybe, 106 within 10 minutes, 107, but at 106, 107, um, that should be good enough to get the, the, the oral temperature up and going. So now we've, uh, t let's take her oral temperature. There we go, it's, we look at it, it's 102. We're gonna take her pulse. Let's take that pulse because we wanna make sure again, it's not going up above 140. All right, we're good. If it was above 140, I would either decrease the level of the water or take away the towel, or I might want to apply an ice pack right onto the chest or the heart to kind of just um, slow the heart down. It does make the, the patient feel a little bit more exhausted and uh, uneasy in the tub if the heart rate is too high. Um, but for now, everything is great. Now we begin timing, sorry, now we begin timing 20 minutes. A big important part of this treatment. In the hot foot bath, your, your um, person may say, I don't really want any hot uh, cold on my head. You know, you may dab here and there. In the fermentation treatment, you may apply little bits of cold onto the head. But in the fever bath, making sure that the head is cool is a major part of making sure that this treatment is safe. All right, so we have our cold water in a basin right here. I can bring it closer, here we go. All right, and almost every, uh, let's see, three to four minutes, we're constantly changing the rags and making sure that her head is cool. We wanna also give her water to drink, not ice cold water because, it, because then it defeats the purpose of getting the temperature up to um, where we need it to be as well as take note of when you give the water, because if you give cold water and then take the oral temperature, right, you may affect 
the, the reading, the oral reading. After 20 minutes of um, above 102, usually if you've never received this treatment before, um, it may be difficult to understand, but when you get, you just have to do this once. Um, you recognize that your body is really weak. You, you, felt like you, you feel like you've gone for a run, right? A really, um, pr usually very weak. And so at the end, we want to end with cold, as we said before. So I'll take this off. And I could either at home, you could either drain your tub and then fill it with cold water. Or if you had cold water available on the side, we're just going to all over the body. And usually they don't like it, but they need it in order for um, them to, the body to feel, um, come back to where it should be. I can't remember the word right now. Yeah, right. So we want the body to come back to where it should be so that a lot of times if we don't end with cold, the client may feel nauseated at the end, again, lightheaded, um, headaches, you know, hours after if you're not ending with cold, all right? So we gotta make sure to end with cold. Then again, we dry off and then jump into bed, okay? We go rest for and this time, yes, about 40 to 45 minutes. I'm gonna ask my team in here if I missed anything. <laughs> we should just go on. Okay, so that was the fever bath. A little bit more intense, as I said before. Um, a lot more work. So you're, um, you know, you're moving around every ten minutes. You're checking the oral temperature, the heart rate, and the temperature of the water. Um, but such a powerful, powerful treatment. Okay, let's move on. Our next treatment is the. Let's move on here. Oh, contraindications. Let me just talk a little bit about the contraindications of the fever treatment. Um, especially if you have an aged individual, um, we wanna make sure that because of the intensity that they, their bodies can handle it. And so um, if we're doing an aged person, I would probably, if uh, the older person has a cold, a cold or a flu, we would probably do the hot foot bath versus this type of intense fever treatment, okay? Um, chest pain, yes, because we are um, affecting the heart. Um, severe shortness of breath, no. And then be aware that uh, of the medication that the client is on. Um, a lot of times we want the physician to give us clearance before um, applying this treatment, all right? But the way that we taught you to do it today is so simple and it, within safe, um, within a safe zone. All right, moving on to the contrast bath. This one is one that you can do right again home today, right at, at the end of this um, class. Let me get my hot bath and my cold bath, perfect. Okay, all right. Yes, prefer, right? Okay, <laughs> all right. The contrast bath or the contrast, um, well, today we're gonna show you how to do it uh, for the face, the contrast facial. Same principle as used at the beginning. It improves circulation. Um, this treatment, I'll have my lady come back here so you can take a look at that. Um, this is the number one treatment that we use for sinusitis, um, congestion, again, when you're having the cold or the flu and you know, you're blowing, but you just can't seem to get the inflammation down and so on or movement, get the sinuses cleared out. This treatment is excellent. All right, so we're going to use, we said this was hot, right? So we're gonna use, we're gonna have our hot water, not scolding hot, just to the tolerance again of the, of the client. So hot water, and then we're gonna have cold. And a lot of times you have also two basins on the side. We don't have two today, but we'll just show you. Have one for adding more ice and one for adding some more hot water. And just like the 
uh, fomentation treatment. We're gonna apply, we're gonna do three minutes of hot and 30 seconds of cold. I have this little snorkel here you can use if you wanted to. Some people just hold their breath. It's kind of really up to you. We're gonna have her demo with this on. Um, we're gonna, let's just put a towel around so that salt in the water. Salt, right, and we can add a little bit of salt, takes the water, you know, more saline, about a teaspoon or so, and we're gonna go right in, you don't have to put it in your mouth, yeah, just <laughs> go in, <laughs> right into the basin. So, of course, if, we, if we're doing the, um, if we're doing this for a headache or for the sinuses, we wanna make sure that the entire face is submerged, right? As much as possible, not into the ears, but all the way up in there. And we're gonna have that, have her in there for three minutes. After uh, three minutes, we're gonna switch over to the cold. So go ahead and switch over to the cold for 30 seconds. Three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold. If you can't do three minutes and 30 seconds, then do two minutes and 20 seconds. While she's in the cold for 30 seconds, I'm sure 30 seconds is gone already, but let me just add, we're gonna add some more hot because the water will cool down as the time goes on. So we're gonna add some more hot to this uh, tub and we're gonna go in or, you know, a bowl, whatever you have at home. During this process, she may want to use some Kleenex to clean out, right? Blow her nose, things like that. Um, we're gonna do this for five times while she's in the hot. I'm gonna add some ice into the cold to make sure that that water stays nice and cold. And you do actually wanna increase the effect on every exchange. All right, so let's go ahead over to the cold for 30 seconds. All right, um, this is again done. We're demonstrating the facial contrast bath. But this you can get yeah, whenever you're ready. But this can be done on a sprained ankle. I think one of the, um, the on the list on the slide there was a, for an ankle. So you went, you were doing something outside, or you sprained your wrist. Same concept. Hot for three minutes, cold for thirty seconds. We could do this on the entire body. Here um, in our facility, we have two large tubs that we di dip you into the hot for three minutes and then you get up and crawl over into this ice bath for 30 seconds. But at home today, you can do this in your shower. Turn your shower on for on, on hot three minutes. Then after turn it to the cold for 30 seconds, always ending with cold like all of our other hydrotherapy treatments and um well you know in the shower you just have to if you're doing it on yourself make sure that your heart rate is within safe range as well as um you're not getting lightheaded from the you know all the, the hot and cold exchange a lot of these treatments of course we want you to do it with someone yeah but very very simple so this is the contrast bath or the contrast um uh, contrast treatment. All right, let's do one more with the time that we have. Or are we are we done with time? Can somebody? You can you can go ahead if it's very short. You can go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Okay, let's do this one actually. Let's do the the ice massage because. Um, this is one that can be used for pain and um, muscle cramps, back pain. I feel like a lot of people um, generally have those type of things going on. And this is a simple, quick and easy way to help with, we'll just pour it, pour it out on the towel and we'll use the, yeah. Um, a simple, a quick and simple way to help with pain. All right. So when people hear massage, they think, oh, something nice. Yes, it is nice, but it's also cold. So here we have, oh, well, we just have our little thing, brother. Um, uh, it's okay. Let me just get this one. All right. So here we have this fancy cup that we fill with water and then put it into the refrigerator. And then it gives us um, a 
big you know piece of ice here that I can't quite get out right now. There we go. But at home you won't have, let me go ahead and hold it in here. At home you won't have this. So you can just fill a um, styrofoam cup. Is that what it's called? Yeah, a styrofoam cup, the white styrofoam cups. Fill it up with uh, water and then put it into the freezer overnight. And then take it out in the morning and just peel off the bottom. So this is the cup. Peel off the bottom of the cup. So now the ice is exposed, but you also have an area on top that you can, um, you can hold, all right, to do your treatment. All right, so let's say she slept wrong on her, I'm gonna put this on your neck, is that okay? <laughs> You're all right with that? I told her we, she wouldn't have to, but um, okay. So you know, they, they call it what a kink in your neck or you're having some pain in the neck from getting up, you know, sleeping wrong and getting up in the morning. Um, all right, so I have my ice that I've frozen overnight. We can turn whichever Andre wants to see. Here we go, perfect. And I'm just gonna put that nice ice right onto, here it comes. All right, right onto the area. And I have my uh, towel, which is pretty big, but we're gonna have our towel and we're gonna dry up the, you know, the excess water from um, running away. All right, so because, because of our time, we're not gonna do this completely, but we do this for about 10, to 15 minutes, honestly, 10 is a, a good enough time. And the stages are cold, burning, and then finally numb. So you will have a short season of burning. Ah, oh, it kind of burns. But for just a couple of seconds, it goes over into numb. And then from there, so if she was really having neck pain, now the, uh, the area is numb and we can do gentle stretches, right, to help um, relax the muscles in that area that's causing the pain. All right, so that's your ice massage. I'm going to end with this quotation here in Councils and Diets and Food that says, there are many ways of practicing the healing art, but there's only one way that heaven approves. God's remedies are the simple agencies of nature that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. Pure air and water, cleanliness, a proper diet, pure, purity of life, and a firm trust in God are remedies for the want of which thousands are dying. All right, thank you so much. That's the end of our presentation for today. Thank you so much, Sister Rakia. That was excellent. And we really enjoyed your presentation. And I'm sure persons will try some of it. Um, I'm sure you week after week you will reinforce some of this information now seeing that we're out of time we only have one minute left but i am going to allow for three questions so persons who have questions just raise your hand and we'll allow for three questions this is not her only presentation but she will have about three other presentations so even if you didn't get the opportunity to ask a question today, you can hold your question until next time Sister Rakia comes back. And even though she might be dealing with another topic, you can still get the opportunity to ask a question from this particular presentation. Okay, so um, you can just raise your hand, Brother Peter. You can help me to identify any areas, any questions, any persons that have raised their hands. Hannah held up first and then Kamel. Okay, so go ahead, Hannah, Hannah Charles, and then Brother Kamal. And Brother Kamal, you need to keep your question short, and it has to be a question. We don't really want comments at this time, okay? Thank you. Go ahead, Hannah. Um, hi, Ricky. Um, for the um, hot half bath, what would you do if you don't have a tub? That's an excellent question. Um, I would probably just use another treatment instead of trying to um, make a, a tub. We went to the mission field uh, a couple years ago to Guyana and we needed to do this treatment. And what we did is we dug a hole in the floor, in the ground, and then put tapolin in there and filled it with water. That's a lot of work. So I would probably use another type of treatment to, um, that will give similar effects. 
Thank you yes, so much, afternoon. Brother Kamal. Just try to keep yes, the question short, please. Go ahead. Uh, Rakia, I just wanted to know: Is it always better to have saline water on hand, or would you, or would you use regular water? One more time, saline water. Yeah, saline water. Is it better in terms of um the the actual salinity of the water? Because you would have mentioned that in your presentation, and I just wanted to know if time it would be better. Thank you. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's just a little extra. Um, icing on the cake that would be helpful to put a little bit of ice uh, sorry um, salt in the water but i've done it tens of times without the uh, the salt so no problem thank you have just a good effect thank you thank you okay we have time for one last question before we have our closing prayer um And I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. So am I missing any hands, Sister Donna? Doesn't look that way. So um, until um, next time. OK, somebody was saying something? Yeah, question um, here. If you OK, a go ahead. Can you hear um, me? No. Okay. I'm oh, hearing so two. Let's have the female first and then the male after. Ladies no, first. Okay, go ahead. No, um, somebody asked a question about a, a tub. Um, I remember in the old days, I um, if you remember those old wash pans, um, the enamel pans. I'm sure, you know, that can substitute for a tub something like that. It's just my comment. That yeah. that's if somebody has that because I don't have any of those. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, all right. The male male question. Yes. Um. Rukia, you mentioned temperatures like 104, 106, 107. Mm -hmm. uh, then you talk about the fever bath. Yes. Um, what tolerance can the head, the brain um, tolerate when you have such high temperatures? Or was it wrong hearing those numbers? So that would, that's the water temperature, 104. 105, 106, 108. Um, the oral temperature, we're only getting it up to about 102. All right. Okay, so thank you. Go All right, our to one, uh, 104, yeah, when the brain, we, we don't want to damage the brain. Thank you. So 102. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay. All right, again, thank you, Sister Rakia. Until next time, I think that would be week after next when we have our another health session. So I'm going to ask Brother Elder Douglin to just give us our closing prayer. And again, thank you. Heavenly Father, indeed, we thank you for the talk that was given on hydrotherapy and its uses in terms of stimulating and altering the circulation patterns, changing the temperature of the core, helping to remove and relieve congestion. We thank you for Sister Wikia's presentation, and we thank you for the privilege of this aspect of health. Let us know as we close and uh, as we go into another session. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.